Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the After Hours Gaming League Season 4 B-League Playoffs for the round of 16 between Cerner and Qualcomm. We are jumping into game number 5. If you haven't seen game number 1, game number 2, game number 3, or heaven forbid, game number 4, go ahead and check those out first. But if you're still around, I'm going to assume you have, and we're going to go ahead and jump in and introduce the players as we spawn. Up here in the top right hand corner of the three player map, a merry go round, we have the purple Zerg player representing no team other than Qualcomm. It is going to be Qualcomm's Bob Love Raccoon. Bobo Love Raccoon. And his opponent spawning down here in the bottom side, we have the teal Protoss player representing his team, Cerner. It is going to be Encrypted. And we'll have to see how well Cerner's Protoss player can encrypt his strategies in this PvZ. Because Bobo is sending out an early drone. He has actually done that nice little Overlord trick. Throwing down the extractor and getting out just a couple extra drones. It's nice if you're expecting to uh, deal with any kind of early pressure. It's, it's one of those preferential things really if you kind of go for the earlier Overlord. Or if you go for the gas and then build a drone and then cancel the drone building the gas guys or will you have an overlord on the way like it's all preferential honestly but it does help if there is any kind of early rush shenanigans just because you can actually have an extra drone out at a really convenient time but regardless none of that kind of shenaniganry is going to be happening and we are just going to be seeing Bobo take his natural expansion and he's gonna actually be going for a hatch before pool and that's actually going to be fun, considering he's seen, okay, there's a gateway expansion coming out from my opponent. I don't have to worry about any kind of cannon shenanigans, trying to stop my hatchery first. And uh, Encrypted, just going to be sitting on that one gas geyser. Only has two guys in one of the gas geysers, so I think that he wants to just try and throw up that natural expansion as soon as possible. Um, just having one extra probe mining those minerals will allow him to throw down that natural expansion a little bit sooner. And he's going to eventually be able to get the scout off on his opponent. But let's talk a little bit about these players again. We've seen both of these players already play. Encrypted did end up playing in the first game against Leaf. And that was in a PvP. It was a little bit different. But still a pretty uh, solid game. And of course we did end up seeing... Bob Leverkun in the last game, game number four, and that was in a ZVT. But Bob Leverkun, Bob Love Raccoon, I think sitting now eight or eight and two or nine and two. I think it's nine and two now uh, with that last game being played. Whereas I believe Encrypted sitting. Oh man, did Encrypted? I, I think Encrypted won his game. No, he lost to Leaf. Leaf with the uh, amazing defense. So I think that Encrypted right now is sitting 12 and 5, but still a very respectable score. It could really anything could happen as we kind of figure out what exactly these two players are going to be going for. We still don't have a second gas geyser down for Encrypted. So it's kind of interesting. I, I'm wondering if he's just going to be adding on a lot of gateways and his forges and stuff. Wants to get this wall in up as soon as possible. Takes out the drone. Going to deny a little bit of that scouting information for what he does throw down that very, very important and valuable tech. In the meanwhile, Bobo Love Raccoon got his Gas Geyser up. Not going to be going for the super duper fast third expansion as a lot of Zerg players sometimes do. Instead, probably going to be going for one around like 5 or 6 or 536 minutes. Wouldn't be too surprised to see one of those drones heading out sometime in the near future and scouting around for proxy problems. This is actually a really, really great move. I love it when Zerg players split up, not just use all your Zerglings in one big old control group. Look at how he's splitting all of them up, sending them all on all kinds of crazy patrols for those proxy pylons, making sure that there's nothing out on the map. And look, there really isn't anything out on the map for Encrypted. All of his units are over at home, setting up this wall and setting up this defense. And... Honestly, if you're a Protoss player that wants to go for some kind of like crazy two base all-in, you generally do want those proxy bones out of the map. So I'm already kind of thinking that this Stargate is just encrypted saying, well, I'm going to go for a bit of a Stargate opening. It's nice. It denies or at least helps prevent Mutalus from really reigning supreme in the game. And honestly, it just it kind of sets you up nicely to maybe take a third expansion. I'd love to see Protoss players take this third expansion, uh, maybe even this third expansion, although this one's kind of... This one could be kind of annoying. This one can be a little bit annoying to try and defend. Since you are also expanding toward your opponent, it just becomes a lot easier for your opponent to kind of do bigs or run bys and all kinds of crazy annoying stuff to that location. But 
Regardless, first Phoenix going to be on the way for Encrypted. He's going to be able to start sniping off some of these overlords that are around on the map. And honestly, there are actually a pretty decent number of these overlords that could end up being quite a bit vulnerable to the Phoenixes when they start popping out. But another gas guys are going down for Bobo. What exactly is he going to be planning? Lair tech, of course, I'm going to be starting up. And finally, that third expansion being thrown down. This is actually a, a pretty late third expansion. I mean, it's 25 seconds in. It's got started around like seven minutes. It's generally about a minute or so later than you normally see that third expansion go down for a Zerg player like Gauntlet and Gas Geyser. So what is Bobo going to be doing with those extra minerals that he had a little bit longer for a little bit earlier? He did actually end up getting up uh, pretty early Spore Crawlers. So upon seeing that the uh, Phoenix was out, the Phoenix, of course, going to have, I believe, oh wait, he actually still hasn't got any kills. Where did that Overlord go? I go, oh, I guess the Stalker must, yeah, the Stalker has one kill. Stalker did manage to get that Overlord kill. Although it looks like that does mean Bobo did get an SL scout off, sees that the third Gas Geyser is down. Doesn't see the fourth one, and that's honestly the one that the Zerg player really wants to see. He wants to see whether both of the Gas Geysers are down, because that really will indicate whether or not the Protoss player is potentially going for a big two base all in if you skip that fourth gas guys you can see all kinds of crazy stuff or if they're more likely just kind of teching up as per usual but only one guy on that fourth gas guys are kind of interesting uh how encrypted has been playing with his gas guys there's not really putting the full number of uh the full number of probes on each one of those gas guys just throughout this game but Phoenix is now moving around, looking for any kind of potential kill locations for those overlords. Looks like he's actually managed to snag yet another overlord, but now the layer tech is finished up, and the tech of choice is going to be a Hydro Stun with a Roach Warren. So, Bobo playing that good old, old school style of Roach Hydra. Been loved since the early days of Wings of Liberties, although it did sort of fade out of favor for a little while, just because Hydros were a... We're not exactly the most comfortable tech choice against a lot of those Colossus tech choices that pro players love doing and, you know, still can be a little bit difficult, but with the Hydra speed, it can still work out much, much better than it used to. And, of course, he is going to need that Hydra speed because the Thermal Lance is being researched and Colossus are going to be on the way for Encrypted Encrypted. Already has a pretty good idea of what his opponent is up to, it seems. Even though he hasn't really seen the high duel stand, he's probably anticipating saying, you know what, a lot of the time, Zerg players like to open up with the high duelist after seeing that I've opened up with Stargate. So it might just be a part of his normal build order to go for that kind of Phoenix play. In fact, I, I am willing to bet that is most likely the reason why he's going straight for that Colossus play immediately afterwards. But Still no third expansion coming out for Encrypted. In fact, we do have, let's see, four gateways, five gateways. Yeah, just five gateways, a Robo and a, a Stargate, and he's not really producing anything out of the Stargate anymore. Five gateways, and you can see they starting to build up a little bit of a bank. I, I've got to feel that he's got to do some kind of move. He's getting his plus one armor now, and I is he going to go for some kind of like three Colossus push? I'm a little bit concerned for Encrypted. I feel like he needs to move out and either take a third expansion or maybe throw down more gateways because I feel like he can really produce off of more than just five gateways and one robo if uh, he's not really doing anything else. Uh, he's still making workers, so I feel like, yeah, he does want to take a third expansion. And there we finally end up seeing that third expansion go down a little bit on the later side, though. 12 minutes. Generally, you do want to see a Protoss player take that sometime between 8 to 10 minutes. You can get do it at 12 minutes, but again, it, it just feels a little bit later than usual. Now, a bunch of these Zergans are going to be trying to look for that run by over in the main base. Nope. We have Encrypted being very, very solid with this play, making sure that he still has that Zealot on hold position. A lot of Protoss players actually neglect that toward the later stages of the game, but, uh, ooh, third expansion does get spotted out. Bobo going to be on to it. And Encrypted going to just keep warping in more and more units while he gets up that third expansion, gets out more and more Colossus. And he's actually leaving his Colossus inside of his main base. So I'm actually wondering if Encrypted is trying to hide the fact that he has those Colossus out. And that couldn't work out very, very well because he's seeing, oh, my opponent's making a lot of Hydralis and that could actually, you know, hi again, Hydralis don't do too well against Colossus because especially Colossus with plus one weapons, they're dealing 17 damage twice. So 34 damage to these Hydralis. And guess what? 34 damage times two or so, and then like maybe one or two stalker hits. Boom! Those are dead Hydralis. And that is a very, very uncomfortable position. These Colossus are going to massacre these Hydralis. And oh, it looks like we have Encrypted getting a little bit messy with his organization for his units, but he still manages to snag quite a few of those Hydralis. The Hydralis 
really just don't have any kind of damage buffer. They're just immediately getting picked off, and he's going to be in a lot of trouble now. He just lost a lot of his Hydro CS to reproduce those, and instead... I mean, he's actually he's actually a very, very comfortable drone count. So I, I was about to say, you know, instead those could have been drones. But you know what? He is fine with how many drones he has, especially for three bases. In fact, I would love to see him take a fourth expansion behind this. But really, what he needs is more and more of those roaches. He needs those roaches to tank the damage for those hydras to make sure that the Colossus are not just creating a giant massacre for them. But oh, I like what Bobo is doing. Bobo, he's setting up for a flank. He sent a bunch of units south. He leaves half the army at the top side, half the army at the bottom side. The observer spots out half the army at the top side, but they don't see that army at the bottom side. He's got him in position. He's going in for the flank now. The Colossus, the Stalkers, the Zealots are all going to be trapped. And now we end up having the Zerglings moving in. The Moon units moving in from the top and the bottom side. Force Seals going down along the top side, trying to prevent those hiders from being able to chew too much. The Zealots, though, they're all on the top side. He has nothing to defend his units on the bottom side one of the colossus is already fallen the proxy pond could very well be under fire very soon but the double time warp has made it much easier for encrypted to try and do this retreat i just don't think that he has enough there's too many hydras too many roaches the creep us red also helping out from amazingly enough for bobo and he's going to continue to push this back more and more of those sentries those valuable val valuable gas units going down the colossus is going to be the next one on the bucket list and very, very soon, I think that Encrypted is going to be thinking, Oh man, I just lost my entire army, and what the hell do I do now? Let's be honest, he doesn't have any Colossus left over, he doesn't have any other kind of tech left over, the Proxy Pylons have been cleaned up, there's just this one Proxy Pylon left over. He has a third expansion, which is awesome, he has a second robotic facility, so he can produce two Colossus at a time. That is also good, but he is not going to have more than probably two Colossus by the time these units move into the third expansion, and one of those Colossus may not even be with the rest of the army. It's going to be just this handful of Stalkers, and honestly, that is not a a very very sizable force especially considering these are plus one plus one roaches and hydros i mean they are even in upgrades and no upgrade advantage going on for encrypted oh the robot facility it gets depowered no colossus is going to be coming out for now and it looks like the stalkers trying to just buy time that's honestly all they're trying to do buying time for that second colossus to pop out it finally does pop out this other colossus never really going to be able to come out just because it is once again depowered at about 60 percent and the roaches and hydros now moving into a nice position trying and snipe out this third expansion the colossus the stalkers they're trying to dps down this army but the nexus is being dps down first and it is going to go down once again it looks like bobo getting into a beautiful position in this game and honestly i don't know if there's a whole lot that anchorage can do he's pulling the probes he's trying to come in the reinforcements but no bobo comes in with reinforcements of his own the hydro's gonna be able to dps down all of these units and i think with it He's going to be DPSing down Encrypted's chances in this game. It looks like Encrypted going to have to tap out. GG gets called. Surter going to tap out. And Qualcomm going to take the game and the series. 3-2. to two. So really well played by both of these teams. We saw some fantastic games with the PvP between Leaf and Encrypted. The PvP between Tsunami and Cornhog. The ZVZ between Critch and Plus One. The TVZ between Lithium and Bob Leverkun. And, of course, the ZVP that we just witnessed between Bob Leverkun and Encrypted. But, at the end of the day, it looks like Qualcomm does advance out ahead to the next round, to the round of eight for the AHGL Season 4 B-League playoffs. Guys, my name is Fear Dragon. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this cast. And if you did, please do consider subscribing and following me over here on YouTube.com slash FearDragon64, as well as over on Twitch.tv slash FearDragon64, where I actually do do some of the AHGL series live casted, um, with the games actually being played out at the exact moment. You guys get to see my, my ugly, ugly, unshaven face, just because usually it's on a Sunday, and I hate shaving on Sundays. Don't ask me why. But regardless, do want to give, a, once again, a big congratulations to Qualcomm. And, of course, really well done by Cerner. They made it to the round of 16, the, to the playoffs. That's definitely not something to scoff at. And, uh, yeah, guys, that is going to be it. So thank you all so much for tuning in. Hope to see you all with some more ASGL stuff coming up soon. Yeah, take care.